you go back further in time, most of these human populations or most groups of people were darker skinned and they had robust features. If I take you back to the early Levant and look up the pre-Arabian hunter-gatherers or early Natufians who come from the Cabrians, they had robust features and would be classified as Negroid. If you look up Professor Iris who looked at the morphology, they would have been classified as semi-Negroid in morphology. But genetically, they already had a unique shift that was independent outside of Africa because the earlier ancestral North Africans split out of in between Upper Egypt and Northern Sudan and crossed over there. And this is when you start to find the Nubian complexes. So some populations became aboriginal to those zones when they developed their own SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms, or went through their own genetic shifts, but still retain ancient robust morphology. So if you go back to Europe 45,000 years ago, even though genetically they were distinct from the population that they descend from, morphologically they still had robust features. If you look at Cro-Magnum people, or the people that was found in the Cro-Magnum caves in France who were Homo sapiens sapiens, which we are now, us, here, they had robust features, darker skin. When you look up Cheddar Man, darker skin, but he had the OCA2 mutation. So you start to see the deletious genes start to go through a shift but if you go back further in time, most humans were darker skinned. So when you look at the, at the New World, like America, of course the earlier natives that crossed the land bridge as early as 16,000 years ago or 20,000 years ago, yes, they were darker skinned. And they would have looked more distinct in the later phase of those people that crossed their land bridge, like the Dukes. They kept going through adaptations and mutations because the eco change shifts, environmental factors, and different things. So the earlier population in that land bridge crossing before they, whether they crossed through near Russia steppes, or whether they cross, some people say the Pacific, they would have been darker skinned if you go back further in time and they would have had robust features. And that goes for everybody. So if you go to the New World and you look at population that was isolated, like when you go to Brazil, the further South America you go towards like, you know, um, the islands or the Caribbeans, even though they were already oh, damn near wiped out by the people that invaded. But when you go to Brazil, that's a good proxy to use. If you look at the indigenous populations, they have robust features and they have an old aboriginal component in them. They found that recently, which showed that the population that crossed from the land bridge, the intermediate ancestral lineage that split or shifted was something called uh, Tiwan Man. Tiwan Man was the intermediate phase of Native Americans and still had a genetic affinity shared with Aboriginals. The earlier humans that crossed out of Africa, ancestral North Africans that crossed through Upper Egypt or Sudan because it wasn't Ethiopia, who was responsible for the Nubian complexes 80,000 years ago, shifting from MTDNA in, who was the daughter of L3. She go over there and MTDNA M1, who was also a daughter of L3, go over there through the Arabian Peninsula, something called the Arabian um, Stance, where these humans settled for a minute before dispersing into further Asia or Eurasia. You start to see the shifts happen there, genetically, but morphologically, if you go back further in time, all of these people look semi-Negroid in description when they look at the fossils. So we got to get out of this shit. The Native Americans were not us. The indigenous Americans, whether they were darker, with robust features or lighter. They were not us. So when we look at these darker skinned people, thinking that it's us, the genetics has been, it's been presented. And if you look it up, most of these natives with Y chromosome Q and P, MTDNA, A, B, and D. Autosomally, it matches up with populations in Eurasia that was adjusted and adapted to the new world, which is America. It's not us, bro. That's all I wanted to say. Oh, that was a great presentation. I appreciate that. I think that was you for real. Thank um, you, brother. Uh, smoke signal in the building. Lucky I let you in here. Man, you I'm Gozi, I, I don't agree with everything you just said, though, man. And I'm sure a lot of people don't, but you said some good things. But it, it, some of that stuff is is there. It's, it's it's philosophy and uh, theory. What made you say that, my brother? First of all, it sounds like it. Okay. Sounds it's, like. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of philosophy and your own personal theory. When that's and that's fine. Everybody got their right to their own thoughts. But to say that there was no so-called black people on this continent before slavery and all that type of stuff, that's ridiculous. Uh-uh. You got it. Uh-uh. You got it. No, listen, listen to me, brother. Listen to me. I understand your feelings. Listen to what I said. I never said there were not dark-skinned people over here. I never said that one time. I just said that all dark-skinned people does not do not equate to you and me. That's what I said. So what I'm trying to say is, yes, there were darker skinned people over here because the, the people that came to America, they had darker pigmentation. That's a fact. Okay, but I'm not I'm dealing with complexion of skin per se, uh, uh, Angozi. I'm saying that woolly head people was already on this continent. I'm going to be more specific then because I'm going to say the woolly head because everybody got dark skin on, on this planet practically. So woolly head people was on this continent for over a thousand years before the so-called white man got here. That's what so, we're, that's what so, we're so, saying. So, 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 so uh, a lot of the natives had edder locus mutation, which is ectoplasm a receptor one, which showed that they had jet black straight hair. Even when Christopher Columbus and some of the conquistadors described them, 
They said they some of them were dark with horse hair, straight hair. As far as woolly hair, to be honest with you, woolly hair doesn't mean anything because the people in the Adamant Islands, hair is thick as the Koi sand people. And genetically, they're not the same people. So hair is not a determining factor of, of who you are as well, because you can share genetics with a person from Papua New Guinea. I mean, not, I'm sorry, morphologies and phenotype to people in Papua New Guinea. And their hair is probably thicker than a lot of African Americans or West Africans. But genetically, they're not the same. They're completely Asian. They're from the Pacific zones. They're, 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 not, they're, they're not. So I wouldn't even use hair as a, as a proxy to describe who is who. That's all I'm trying to say. Head on me. Okay, no, no, we got people. We, we got, agree. Got, with, got, okay, got, I, got, I said got, that earlier. Really, I'm, I'm saying I'm almost, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. We got people in Yemen would not be as hell, and they might be fair skinned Like we got light skinned Yemenese people would not be as hell. Will be classified as not be here. And you got some with the jet black straight hair, wavy hair. You got people in Africa with soft hair, right? Or what we classify as hair is. You have to look at the alleles and the shift and pair the genes for hair. Hair is not a good like RS one thirty five point six point three. When you look at these alleles. That's not a good proxy to describe who's who intact in the sense of describing a population. It's really not when you start to look at these alleles or pairs of genes. Hair isn't a good a good example. So what I'm trying to say is yes, there were darker skinned people in the early Americas, but they were not us. When you look at our genetics and you look at what's been sequenced in these principal component analysis that's used, it matches up with people in West and Central Africa. And even West and Central Africa has a lot of layers and combined situations that's responsible for that because they have a history before they got you. They had a history even before you were Yoruba. The Yoruba is the ethnic group, only goes back 2,700 years. They were another group of people before that. Now you gotta get into the Nook population. From the Nook, they was in the Sahil. Then you gotta get into where did EM2 come from? EM2 was all through the Green Sahara before dispersing south, developing sickle cell to fight off malaria, dispersing into tropical zones, and meeting up with ancient West African hunter-gatherers who had ghost population genes before we had these ethnic groups of the Ananian cultures that formed into Niger Congo speakers much later. So you do have in some layers of tropical West African, ancient North African ancestral layers that drifted down as Kipians and Tenarians before inserting through Niger and crossing through the um, uh, Mali and mixing up with other populations where you find the first Negroid morphology or what they classify Congoid morphology, which is not the first because you find a lot of them in the Nile, like in Jebel Sahaba, but you find a Silver Man in Mali. So I'm just saying, like, like even before you have us crossing over, there's a lot of history and adaptations and mutations that went on in tropical Africa before crossing over here. And all of that stuff lines up with people in West and Central Africa. That's all I'm saying. Okay, and are you saying everybody that's over here in America now came from somewhere else? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that everybody that's in, in this new world, whether you're Northwestern European highly, or whether you're African Americans or African American Creoles, as I call us, African New World, uh, African North American Creole people, most of us are highly Western Central African with Northwestern European genes, whether it's from Ireland or the UK or Britain or Scottish. And most of the white people are mainly from Northwestern Europe and North America and then Latin America. A lot of them are mestizos in the media population between the indigenous and Spaniards and Portuguese that crossed over here first before the British even got in the game. So, what I'm trying to say is that the only people, believe it or not, who are very close to the original inhabitants of America. I ain't talking about the Native Americans that are still struggling or the ones on reservations or the ones that are on casinos because they still have chunks of that too. But the ones who are really close to the original inhabitants of America is Mexicans who have a larger chunk of Native American DNA. People from Venezuela, they have more of the larger chunk indigenous tag DNA than anybody. And they don't even realize it sometimes. That's all I'm trying to say.